I asked this question. Vitamin C is one of nature's most potent antioxidants. How much broccoli would you need to eat for your daily dose of vitamin C? Is it A, less than a cup, B, three cups, or C, ten cups? Any thoughts? Three. Lots of threes and tens. The correct answer is less than a cup. <laughs> Who got it right? Who got it right? Yeah, a few of you. But this is the, the big point here is you don't need a lot sometimes, but it can be confusing because there are some foods that don't give you what you need. So registered dietitian Ashley Kopp is here to reveal the best ways to get your antioxidants. So we just talked about the new research that raises a concern that so many Americans might actually be overdosing on antioxidant supplements. Do you think the same is true for the food sources? Not really. You know, I think what is so great is your body is going to give you messages if you were having too much of something. For example, if you're doing something called mono eating. You know, if I have somebody who's eating something, the exact same thing at every meal, or if you're sticking to just one color, if you've decided, you know, green is the it color and you're just having that, you might miss out on other nutrients, but you're probably still not going to hit toxicity. It's not the same as getting it from a pill. It's your food. All right, so Ashley's going to walk us through the four key antioxidants. So we're going to start with the first one, vitamin A. It's important because it's anti-inflammatory. It's healthy for your vision. You need it for your eyes. It's also great for your bones. My recommended value, I just talked about it, uh, was 2,500 international units. So what do we have to eat to get that exact same amount in our bodies every day? Yeah, and this is so simple. I mean, what we're talking about here when we look at vegetables, a quarter of a carrot, a quarter of a sweet potato. <laughs> I love this. I mean, there's no excuse to even be overeating on sweet potato when you only need a quarter to get your vitamin A in. Now, if you don't want veggies but you prefer fruits, your source could be? Right, so you've got a quarter of a cup of cantaloupe here. Just remember that orange, your vitamin A, you're going to get it in that way. But if you're a dairy lover... We run into a place, a half of a pound of goat cheese. There's no dietitian, I think, that can recommend having a half pound of goat cheese. But we'll be handing yeah. this out today. But this is, you know, we could do this <laughs> no enough. go. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, for the protein yeah. lovers... Yeah, I mean, no matter what your protein source is, two and a half pounds of shrimp, etc., no go. Skip the cheese, skip the protein, come back over, get your vitamin A. Remember, it's so good for your skin, too. Get your vitamin A from your sweet potato, your carrot, all of those great orange fruits or vegetables. If you're not getting it, if you hate orange for some reason, you're allergic to it, can't get it in, then go with the multivitamin that you were talking about where just keep that low dose, the 2500 IU. Vitamin C is our next antioxidant vitamin we're going to talk about. It's an immune booster, also helpful for the skin. Daily value, 60 milligrams. Don't need a massive dose here. How much of vitamin C can you get, for example, in fruits and vegetables? Yeah, we were talking about it. You know, when we look at broccoli and cauliflower, quarter, you know, a cup and a quarter of cauliflower, three quarters of a cup of broccoli, that's a perfect portion. Mash it up. You've got mashed cauliflower, delicious. From your fruits, you can do beautiful strawberries. That's a great portion size. One big orange, you're good to go. But for the dairy lovers out there. Yeah, people who are thinking, or you know how you were talking about the marketing or advertising, if your yogurt is being advertised as a vitamin C source, you're missing it. You're gonna get not just a belly ache, but horrible for your body if you're eating 30 cups of low-fat yogurt. <laughs> All right. And there's actually no animal protein source that's going to get your vitamin C. Yeah, so we've gotten two great examples for vitamins A and C of, of produce versions. Now, the antioxidant vitamin E is, is unique. It's very important for brain power. Uh, the, the amount that we recommend is about 30 international units. So it's not a huge dose. How do we get that through right. food? Now, I am always going to tell people to go for your fruits and vegetables first. But telling somebody they need to have five and a half cups of spinach in a day is a little yeah. bit, you know, it's tough. That's <laughs> like spinach juice all day long. We were talking about we don't want someone mono eating. So spinach, not your choice for vitamin E. Great for other things. Here we are. Raspberries, berries, amazing for you. 19 cups for vitamin E. It's not going to be your choice for vitamin yeah, E. That could hurt the no. pocketbook too. Right, exactly. But this is the best part of all. My favorite demonstration <laughs> is, are you ready for the dairy lovers? <laughs> Let's, if you take away one thing today, you are not getting your vitamin E from cheese. That's not <laughs> going to be your place. 50 cups, never going to work out for you, your waistline, your body, your heart. Oh, it would be Nothing. a disaster. Same thing with beef. Even though there are two E's in the word, you do not want to be nine and a half pounds. <laughs> But one of the great things are your nuts and seeds. Yeah. So almonds, great source, super easy, about a half a cup of almonds. You're going to get your wonderful vitamin E in that way. The last antioxidant we're going to talk about is selenium. It's a mineral like vitamin C. It's very important for the immune system. Daily value is 70 micrograms. What do you suggest here? So criminy mushrooms, and if you're going, okay, criminy mushrooms, where do I find those? What are they? It still is three cups. You could get that in, but again, access and even liking the taste may be an issue. <laughs> Bananas, not your choice of selenium. Great choice of other minerals, but it's not going to be the place that you're going to get. 
Dairy, again, not the choice for selenium. You'd have to have seven cups of milk. Way too much on that part. And finally, for the protein lovers. Yeah, so here we actually have two great options. I'm a huge fan of fish. And five ounces of halibut, it is a little bit of a larger portion. You could get it in two spaces, or you could get that portion, or one Brazil nut. One Brazil nut. So one of the reasons that I love nuts is you can get some of these key nutrients in there without having a you know, package supplement to do it. Very helpful as always. All right, coming up next, there is one antioxidant supplement that doctors agree everyone should follow. Everybody. Find out what it is and why you don't get enough of it. That's next. Coming up, experts say you're not getting enough of it. The one antioxidant I recommend you take in supplement form. It's been shown to lower blood pressure and cholesterol. It also is the most powerful way of naturally increasing energy production. Find out what it is when we come back. There's one powerful antioxidant experts say you're not getting enough of. And they all agree it's the one pill worth swallowing. Ubiquinol, this powerful antioxidant, may hold the secret to protecting your heart, revving your energy production, and slowing the aging process. It's being recognized all across the medical community, from traditional doctors to alternative health practitioners. In my practice, women are constantly complaining of low energy, especially as they age. One of the first things that I recommend is Ubiquinol, which helps your body make energy naturally. It's a natural way to get the antioxidant protection you need for your heart and to lower blood pressure. Patients come to me because they want alternatives for prescription pills. I agree, ubiquinol is a powerful antioxidant that can reduce the signs of aging. I agree with the experts. Ubiquinol is the one antioxidant I recommend you take in supplement form. It is found in every cell in your body. That's why it's called ubiquinol because it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. The amount in your body decreases as you age, and here's why you ought to consider taking ubiquinol. It's been shown to lower blood pressure, help with your cholesterol, and it helps with complications from the statins. It also is a powerful way of naturally increasing energy production, because it's right in those energy packets of your cells. The problem, of course, is, I mentioned earlier, you have less of it as you get older, so it does seem to impact how your body performs. So let's say this is your energy wheel. Right? And you normally, when you're really young, this thing is spinning around because you've got lots of ubiquinol. So in your 20s, as you pour this in here, it starts things off pretty aggressively. And you go faster and faster and faster and faster, and you really spin the wheel of life, making lots of energy. Everyone's happy. Everyone likes the way life feels. In your 30s, you've got a fair amount also. Right? So you can get all the energy you want to raise the kids, get your job in line, all those things you know, you know you're supposed to do. The problem is, as we age, ubiquinol decreases. It is ubiquitous, but in smaller amounts. And your body begins to go, sometimes it seems, almost backwards. And as that happens, and as ubiquinol levels get lower and lower in the body, you've got to find a way of making sure you can actually move in the right direction. What ubiquinol does, it takes you, no matter where you may be in life, and it speeds you up in the right direction, just like when you were younger. And that's why it's so valuable for us, and that's why all of the experts are agreeing we need to take more of it. So the question is, what's the right dose? The right dose is about 100 milligrams of ubiquinol per day. To get even close to that amount, and we've been talking about this, you'd have to eat the right foods, but to eat the right foods, in this case, you'd need seven pounds of beef, which you're not allowed to do every day, folks, even if you could afford it. You'd have to have eight pounds of peanuts, which even for me would be difficult. You need 125 cups of cauliflower and over 300 oranges a day. Not happening, is it? So here's what you need to know, because you're not going to eat all this stuff. You want 100 milligrams per day of that pill. You're going to take it with a meal that has some fat in it, because when you have a little bit of fat in the meal, it will help the absorption of the ubiquinol. It may be called coenzyme Q10 on the bottle. That's OK. But more and more companies are now selling it as ubiquinol. Again, it's called that because it's ubiquitous all over the body. All right, coming up. Find